Tom here from Lawrence Systems and TrueNAS 12.0 U5 or Update 5 was released on August 3rd of 2021. Today is August 5th, 2021. And I loaded the update as soon as it came out. So far, two days later, everything still works. That's an important thing. And I don't mind doing all the testings. I know a lot of people are a little more nervous about it and maybe not as familiar. So if an update goes wrong, it may be a big deal to recover. It's still a big deal to recover if something goes completely wrong, but nonetheless, I like to do all the testing and provide some feedback on this. So I would say, yes, you should update to the latest version, and we're going to dive into all the details of what's new and what's changed and why you should update to the new version. Before we dive into those details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire sure a project, which does include storage consulting, especially around TrueNAS systems, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. All right, now let's dive into the TrueNAS U5 update. So here's my TrueNAS Mini 3.0 X Plus running TrueNAS 12.0 U5. And before we jump over to this, I know one of the problems before was this not working, which was the CPU issue. This actually got fixed, I believe, in one of the middle updates of there, but it still works fine in the latest version. Uh, this was an annoyance, of course, where, well, it was not working and people are like hey it doesn't throw all, show all the cpu stuff i don't look at this very often but kind of cool and we'll just kick off something real quick to put the usage back up hey look now it's showing all the high usage because i'm running some intensive stuff on there all right we'll let that run in the background and dive through these changes here's a quick highlight about 20 improvements and 80 bug fixes Python upgrades to address potential memory leaks and eliminate rare middleware crashes. There's always some edge condition, and this is why it's so important to give the developers feedback, because it works in their scenario but may not work in yours is because there are a different set of parameters or a different use case you have. So they are really good about addressing all those edge cases, but they always have to be made aware of them. And that doesn't mean just complaining in a YouTube comment down below and actually going out and filling out one of their tickets for this. I just like to bring it up every now and then in case you're new and haven't heard me say that almost every time I do a video like this, contacting developers. Several security updates to key components uh, that are not available in 11.3. TrueNAS R-Series Mini Enclosure Management has been improved. Now, this is actually where they are taking advantage of the merged code base when they were FreeNAS versus TrueNAS by consolidating everything into one. If you looked at the TrueNAS updates when they were a separate product, you would say, oh, they're only updating things for like the enclosures and their devices. Now, it's all the same code base, whether you buy an IX systems device or you build it all on your own hardware, um, all those updates come in. Obviously, you would not be able to take advantage if you built your own hardware type of system of the enclosure updates, the enclosure layouts, and I'll show you what that means. Go over here, we set view enclosure in this one right here. It does give you all the drive layout and where they are in a status. That is something only available to the IX systems hardware. But nonetheless, like I said, same code base, whether you buy it from them or not. Great job of them doing uh, this consolidated code base. And I'm sure all the developers are so much happier about that. NVMe drive resizing. This is kind of interesting. I didn't really think about this, but I, this is going to be an issue. You can resize under certain circumstances. You can expand the pool out where you replace drives and then do the expand. Uh, NVMe drives just was an option, but of course, NVMe being so new, there's probably not a ton of people that swapped out a group of NVMe drives and needed them to expand. But with this being a more uh, mainstream, so to speak, I'd say NVMe uh, arrays, they're still expensive to build large scale ones, but this is going to be something that comes up. And it was actually interesting because it was something they said was easy to support. It just didn't have the drive type in there. So uh, it wasn't like a major code rewrite to get that working. And it's now a feature. They, of course, have a long, long list of all these issues here, but let's just grab a couple highlights. This one's kind of cool right here is the Asus XG100C, not showing up and that they fix this. Uh, this card is actually pretty great. It's actually the one in my computer. I've not tried it in TrueNAS because all my TrueNAS have SFP in them. Uh, and I do have a video where I just talked about SFP being used. So I can leave some links uh, to that where you generally want to use that for server because it's a really low latency. But for convenience, a lot of people would probably like a standard RG45 type one. So it's good that they have support for this as a popular card. Cache static info and optimize system.info on TN Core. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. I didn't really think about this, but I have noticed that the page would load a little bit slow on some things and it feels 
could be completely me. I didn't actually do A-B testing with U4 versus 5. But one of the things they do is have to retrieve this info when they're rendering the pages. And they have now just decided to statically cache it. I thought it was a good update on there that they're really looking at ways to optimize and improve the little workflow things that are in there, including like your UI experience going, hey, why keep pulling the same data if it's static uh, once it's booted, for example. Uh, this is the disk resize uh, to cover MVME. We should be able to have a capability in TrueNAS Enterprise Core and Scale. And by the way, once again, with the different code bases between TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale, you also have bugs and features that will be in parity because they pull from a similar code base. Obviously, with TrueNAS Scale, it's based on Debian, so there's a lot of different underlying features, but a lot of the middleware is going to be very similar for the functionality. Update FIO 3.26. Now, I've not done a video on this, and I realize I probably should. We brought this up the other day in the Home Lab show talking about FIO, which is a disk benchmarking tool. Um, it's one of the really handy things when you're trying to solve some of the problems of disk issues. And that's what actually the command was I ran right here. You can run FIO right natively built in. You don't have to install it as an extra tool in true nas and the advantage of course is if you need to make a determination under what circumstances and fio has a lot of different fine tuning so we did a random rewrote read write with an io depth of one um, block size of 4k 256 size number of jobs eight and runtime of 60 seconds group reporting and press enter this thing can give you a baseline for how fast the drives are on the raw this is actually great that they updated to the latest version because if you didn't have the latest version maybe there's some command line switches that didn't work for you but either way this is a handy utility that sometime i'll probably do a video on just talking about uh, when you're doing performance tuning and storage tuning being able to run this directly on the drives to kind of get some ideas of whether or not those changes you make are flowing through it's also good to use fio to determine the storage speed before you start adding other services and complexities on top of it and figuring out why they may have a disk bottleneck first start at the raw disk and then each one beyond that from there i didn't run into this but this is an interesting once again edge case a uh, snapshot retention being ignored so if you were having this problem and it basically it sounds like if there was a failure it would then or an incomplete snapshot from a replication, uh, it would hold it more than the seven days that the person had in here. And of course, this could create a condition that's very not wanted where you have a ton of snapshots that you just don't want or and they end up filling up the drive potentially. Uh, so that has been fixed if you had that problem. This is the edge case that creates it. Sounds like as I didn't have a bunch of snapshots that were ignored, so it doesn't do it all the time, but on certain cases, once again, it did. And for those of you that liked Nextcloud, uh, people had asked me about some Nextcloud failures. I'd seen it in the forums. I haven't tried installing Nextcloud in a while. And my preference is to build Nextcloud in a, its own virtual machine, not necessarily run it inside of FreeNAS. But honestly, I'm not a ne Nextcloud user that often. I've done it for some one-off projects. Uh, I've done some video demos on it, but it's not something I use here every day. It's not something we keep actively running in our stack. So for those of you that were having problems with the MySQL and fails because of it, they now have an update that fixes that issue. So hopefully that'll be pretty helpful for people, you know, who have been trying to get Nextcloud installed and ask that question of why does it fail under this condition? And that's now been solved. So awesome. Now, as far as everything else inside of here, we didn't see anything uh, different, really. They have uh, one thing I will note right here. And that's the data set tree collapses every edit. If there are many nested data sets and storage pools, pool data sets one, two, it takes quite a while to navigate the data set in question. If one wants to edit something, uh, the edit options return an entire tree collapse has to be reopened for consecutive edits. So this was like a one feature. And I don't think I have enough in this particular server or any of the servers that I have here right now. But being able to edit these, there is at least some minor UI changes. But for the most part, as you can tell here, everything pretty much looks the same. There's not really anything dramatically different about this version. Now, as far as running the latest version and updating to it, as always, the same rules apply. Backup, backup, backup. RAID is not a backup. 
data spread across a lot of drives is not a backup because if it's all in one system, something could potentially go wrong. So before you do these updates, you should always have the latest backup, download your latest config file, which it prompts you to do, which I love that feature that they added it because that was not something in the earlier versions of FreeNAS. It does prompt you when you load an update, hey, would you like to download and export all these? Which of course you want to make sure you're exporting your keys if you're using encryption for your pool. That way you have all that data in case the boot system fails. And in the event that something happens when you're doing an update and the boot system does fail, as long as you have those backups and your data drives are still intact, you can just reload and import and life is good and everything's back to normal. So I don't see any reason not to update this. Nothing that I ran into wasn't working. Matter of fact, this video is edited on TrueNAS 12.0 U5. That's where my studio server saves all the data. And then I edit it off that and save it back to it and upload it. So that's all being done on this. So, you know, we try to do some real world testing with this before we roll it out. And of course, we'll be slowly rolling this out to our clients when time is allowed, usually weekends or uh, evenings when systems are not under heavy load. All right. And thanks. And I'll be leaving links to all this, of course, down below. And I also have a new playlist uh, set up with our Lawrence.technology site to consolidate all the tutorials on FreeNAS and TrueNAS. And that'll be linked down below. Thanks. Oh, see you in the forums. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.